Hello everybody, in our series of lectures on basic electronics, learning by doing, let us move on to the next. But before we do that, as usual, let us try to recapitulate what we discussed in our previous lecture. You might recall in our previous lecture, we discussed some of the very interesting applications of operational amplifiers, namely the logarithmic amplifier, how we can introduce a logarithmic relationship between the output and the input using a semiconductor diode or a transistor connected in the form of a diode. We also saw how by a simple switching of the configuration, we can have anti-logarithmic amplifier or the exponential function. We also saw how this type of circuits help us to obtain multipliers that where the output voltage will be the product of the two inputs. Finally, we also saw one simple application of this uh, operational amplifiers namely a very inexpensive AC millivolt meter because you know the op amp can be used along with the diode to achieve almost ideal characteristics of the diode then even for very low AC signals you will have no problem with the semiconductor diode and the cutting voltage can be reduced to a very low extent and therefore even millivolts and microvolts can be rectified and then you can have a voltmeter to measure the peak voltage or peak to peak voltage or the RMS voltage whatever you can calibrate them to read whatever you would like to. So, these are the different circuits that we saw in the previous lecture. Now, in the present lecture we propose to discuss some of the applications of operational amplifiers in filter circuits. You know electrical filters are very important they have remained important from a long time even from a very simple design of a power supply DC power supply by using an AC input you know you have to have a filter circuit the pi section or the L section filter for removing the ripple voltage of the AC input. Almost all communication systems use filters yeah, basically a filter passes one band of frequencies while rejecting another and there is another way of looking at filter filters and that is the filters can be two types one type is called passive filter and the other type is called active filter in a passive filter you will have only mostly passive components like resistors capacitors inductors etc. Whereas, if it is an active filter then in addition to all these R L C you would also have an active device one or two active devices like an operational amplifier or a transistor etc. Most of the time the active filters built with resistors and capacitors and operational amplifier in our present case are very useful up 
below 1 megahertz and they do have good power gain and they are very easy to tune. If you want to go for higher frequencies or higher gains then you have to go for other types of filters. We do even have digital filters as against the analog filters which are the ones normally we discuss they are the whole range of topic digital filters are also available they are very extensive books and literature papers are available on those things. So, in general filters can separate desired signal from the undesired signal they can filter out what is required from the unwanted signal and it can also in this in this way block the interfering signals those signals which are coming in unintentionally and therefore, we do not want them to clutter the final output the signal that we want to evaluate or study. For example, enhancement of speech and video it is a very important area in communication and entertainment electronics. So, in all these things we have to use filters extensively. What are the types of filters? I already mentioned to you one type of classification namely passive filters and active filters. Apart from that you have other classification too. For example, filters are based divided based on their characteristic frequency characteristics. For example, I have on the screen you see there is a low pass filter. A low pass filter as the name itself suggests will pass all frequencies which are low compared to one critical frequency and all higher frequencies will not be allowed to go in. So, a low pass filter will allow frequencies which are low frequencies and it will completely attenuate all which are high frequencies beyond a particular critical frequency. So, immediately you can guess what will a high pass filter do and high pass filter will do just the reverse that it, it will block all the low frequency components from the input and only allow frequencies above a critical frequency cut off frequency. So, that is high pass pass all the higher frequencies that is what the filter will do. When you have a low pass and a high pass then obviously, we can also have one which is called a band pass filter where we mean by band pass it will pass only a band of frequencies that means, it will not pass certain low frequencies then it will pass certain range of frequencies in the mid band and then it will not pass any of the frequencies beyond certain limit and therefore, it will pass only a very narrow band or smaller band of frequencies while this attenuating all the other range of frequencies that is called band pass filter pass a band of frequencies. Still you can have another version which is an inversion of this that is pass band stop filter or band reject filter where it will out of the all frequencies available it will only reject certain range of frequencies or a band of frequencies and allow all the rest as against the band pass. So, band stop will stop a band of frequencies and send all the other frequencies. Then we also have an all pass filter which will again pass all frequencies then why do we call it as a filter at all because it will have a different phase relationship and other gain factor and things like that which we have to worry about. So, you do have a whole variety of uh, types of filters like low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop and all pass filter. Now, let us take a typical example of a low pass filter and try to understand the characteristics in general of the different types of filters. So, the most important point with reference to the filters is their frequency response. What is the frequency response of the filter that is how the name low pass, high pass etcetera come. So, you can see on the screen there is a figure which shows the response of a filter corresponding to a low pass filter. So, you find the y axis is marked A which is actually the gain of the amplifier or whatever filter you have and the x axis 
is in general usually the logarithmic scale of frequency. Now you see you the gain is a constant over certain range of frequencies and then it immediately drops suddenly it drops to 0 and then beyond that it is only 0. So, we call there are two range regions of the response one is called the pass band where the band of frequencies are passed by the filter and then we have what is known as the stop band where all the frequencies are stopped from going out to the output and the critical frequency is like a brick wall therefore it is called a brick wall response so fc the critical frequency is the absolute limit below which all frequencies will be sent and above which no none of the frequencies will be sent to the output so this is an ideal characteristic of a low pass filter we always know that it is very difficult to realize this type of a characteristics in real filter design so but the basic idea that you should have in your mind is a low pass filter passes all frequencies from zero that means dc to some cutoff frequency and blocks all frequencies above the cutoff frequency how does a low pass filter look like you can see on the screen a very simple configuration this is actually a passive low pass filter it contains a resistor and a capacitor you find the resistor is in series with the output and the capacitor is in shunt configuration so you can immediately imagine from the knowledge of the behavior of r and c at different frequencies you know when i increase the frequency here initially very close to dc or low frequencies the capacitor whose reactance is 1 by j omega c you would find the omega is in the denominator so for low frequencies the denominator is low so you will have no attenuation or you will have high resistance you can also see the capacitor has got high impedance because it is just a parallel plate with a dielectric inside so no dc can pass through therefore all the dc unrelated low frequencies will go straight because there is no this is a high resistance path through the capacitor but as you increase the frequency the 1 by omega c factor the omega keeps increasing therefore the reactance offered by the capacitance keep decreasing and therefore as i go to high frequencies the voltages high frequency signal will find an easy path through the capacitor than going to the output and the load resistor that we have and therefore you would find uh, beyond a certain frequencies they will all be turned or short circuited by the capacitor and therefore none of them will appear at the output so therefore you can see low frequencies will go straight to the output and i say go keep increasing the frequency high frequencies will find the capacitance to be an easier path or a low resistance path and therefore they will be shorted to the ground and it they will return back and therefore nothing will be seen on this side and the response is also shown below you can see the gain versus the frequency it is almost flat for some region the mid band or the low frequency and then it starts falling almost like a straight line beyond that it it might uh, never come to zero it will be showing a very small value for large frequencies asymptotically it will be going to zero now this flat portion is called the mid band frequency the frequency which is constant almost then beyond some place you will have the cutoff but how do you determine where the cutoff is we have seen this several times with reference to amplifiers and all that you know the cutoff will be identified as a place where the power gain falls by half this is a half power point or you can also say in terms of voltage gain when the voltage gain comes down by 1 by root 2 times the maximum gain that you obtained or 0 0.707 times the gain that you got which is 1 by root 2 is 0 0.707 and therefore it is possible to uniquely determine the cutoff frequency as the point at which the gain falls by 1 by root 2 times so 
beyond that it starts falling very drastically and therefore, all higher frequencies will not be allowed. This is corresponding to the low pass filter and this is corresponding to the uh, passive low pass filter, because there are no active component here. You have only the R and C and you do not have any active component like the transistor or the op amp. Now, I show you one either real picture of a frequency response of a low pass filter, where you can see it is almost straight, the blue line shows almost straight and then there is a small curvature and then it is again almost straight for a straight line falling quickly to 0, very low value this is the gain and this is the frequency as I already told you, this is the pass band and what you have is the stop band and in between you have something which is actually called the transition region, this is a transition region where the gain will start falling and beyond when it falls below 0 0.707 times the gain of the uh, initial stages, we call that we have crossed the cutoff frequency and then there is the filter is no more useful beyond that frequency. Okay, this is generally called board plot, especially when you represent gain also in logarithmic and frequency also in both are in logarithmic scale, then this becomes a board plot. Right. So, we have already seen the simplest configuration of a low pass filter involves a simple R and C. You can also use L and C or any other combination, but R C is a simplest filter and inexpensive and then it will be good enough for several simple application. We are only using a simple R C filter even in the case of a rectifier, okay, when you want to convert A C into D C, you use only an R C filter and then get away with that. Now, <coughs> what is the frequency, cutoff frequency, how do you obtain the cutoff frequency? You would find cutoff frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi tau, where tau is nothing but the time constant that is 1 by 2 pi R C, where R is the resistance, C is the capacitance of this configuration. And the F is in hertz and tau is in sec seconds, because that is a time constant and R is in ohm, C is in farads. 1 by 2 pi R C is the cutoff frequency for this type of low pass R C filter. You also know the cutoff frequency is a point at which the output power is half of the input which is corresponding to in decibel scale minus 3 dB. All these things we have already discussed in our earlier lectures. right? So, there are some simple examples of low pass filter. When a music is playing in another room, you still have a very low notes heard in, the, in this room and you will not hear the very high notes, the large high frequency uh, music will not be heard in the second room, but some of the low frequency uh, corresponding to the drum beat and things like that you will be able to hear, because they belong to low frequency response. And similarly, light music played in one car is heard at a low throbbing by the occupants of the other car, because the closed vehicle with the air cab and all that function as a low pass filter. In all these cases, the walls of the room and the car etcetera, they act, act as almost like a low pass filter. They attenuate all the high frequency and only allow the low frequencies. Electronic low pass filters are used to drive sub -hoofers. You have now almost every home has got a home theater, where you have multiple uh, loudspeakers. Each one of them will try to uh, catch her to certain range of frequencies, so that you do have a three dimensional effect when you sit and listen to the music there. So, radio transmitters also use low pass filters to bark harmonic emissions, which might cause interference with other communications, uh, because you should, when you pass certain band of frequencies due to non ideal nature of the some of the devices, you would find there will also be other harmonics generated along with the carrier frequency that you want to do and those harmonic frequencies can come in the other frequency bands, which are uh, exclusively set apart for other communication channels and therefore, you should stop them from interfering with those signals and therefore, you would look for a good efficient filter, which will block all those harmonic components. 
right. An integrator we have already seen is also an example of a low pass filter for the you may remember in the integrator we just used a RC only again. When you use an RC in an operational amplifier you can make an integrator when the C is in the uh, feedback loop. So, that also is in one sense a low pass filter in if you look at the frequency response it be a low pass filter. Okay. The second important point apart from the cutoff frequency is the gain or the attenuation in this case we do not call it gain because most of the time the output if it is a passive filter the output will always be less than the input therefore, there is going to be only attenuation. Of course, if it is an active filter because the active filter has got very high gain you may be able to achieve also some amount of gain in the output. Apart from that in general you would get only an attenuation and therefore, the attenuation is given by normal thing no v output by v, uh, v output what you get now to the v output what you get at the mid frequencies or where the uh, response was flat. So, that is what we call the attenuation right. So, I also explained to you the difference between the ideal and the real filters. Ideal filters will have a very brick wall type of response I also showed you one of the example in the earlier case for the low pass filter. However, it is very difficult to realize the real filters you will have always a flat response and then a quick fall with a almost a linear response that is what is reasonably practical. But we always strive, strive to get as close to an ideal response as possible. Okay. When I want as closely as possible to a first order filter, first uh, to a ideal filter you would find if by just using one RC combination you will not be able to get that bit of very sharp fall beyond the cutoff frequency. So, when you want very sharp cutoff then you must go for higher order filter. If you use only one RC it is called the first order filter if you use multiple R and C combinations then you can go for higher order second order or third order or multiple order. For in general people will try to organize in such a way that when you have a first order filter usually the fall beyond the cutoff frequency will be at a very steady state for steady rate usually about one half for every uh, octave double of doubling of frequencies or you say minus 6 dB fall the slope will be minus 6 dB per octave or uh, 20 dB per decade that is what they used to take say for in the voltage uh, gain factor. So, minus 6 dB or octave if you want minus 12 dB octave then you have to go for 2 combination that means 2 RC combination. So, it becomes a second order filter and if you go to higher order you can have n into 6 dB per octave type of a fall the fall off fall off will be either minus 6 dB or minus 12 dB or whatever and that is that will decide how sharp is the fall. If it is minus 12 dB that means, it is falling more for the same doubling the frequency that during the when you double the frequency the gain falls by minus 12 dB instead of minus 6 dB or minus 18 dB and therefore, it becomes much more sharper and sharper and if you keep increasing maybe ultimately you can reach almost the brick wall configuration, but it is not true you when you do such things you have to compromise for everything for every gain that you get you have to lose by paying some price some other place. And therefore, but in general it is very common to go for second order or third order maximum filters very high orders are used only for very special applications right. This is what I was mentioning to you that second order filter will have uh, slightly better frequency response and higher order filters can improve little more. But before I want to go into that because they will also introduce some phase between the RC component because you are using RC there will be a phase difference between the input output that also has to be taken care of and therefore, you would find in the design you have to look at different aspects. So, on the basis of this response you can have certain types of filters available I have listed them on the screen for example, you have a Butterworth filter you also have a Chebyshev filter you also have a Bessel filter etcetera. The most popular flat response 
filters are called Butterworth filters. They have maximally flat, flat response and therefore, they are called Butterworth filters and you do have other Chebyshev filters etcetera, which will show some peak at the break over region and therefore, they have to be carefully handled. Let me not go into the detail, because it is basically a basic electronics course. I will indicate to you that there are different varieties of uh, configurations that you can uh, bring in in the design of active filters and passive filters. So, filters can be classified on the basis of the particular order, whether it is first order filter or a second order filter etcetera. They can also be classified on the basis of the pass band, low pass, high pass, band pass etcetera. Right. So, when you use a passive low pass filter, I already mentioned to you, you just have a very simple RC circuit. This is a drawn, the same picture is drawn in a slightly different, so that you can immediately recognize that when I gave an input, the output will also be always be less than the input, because there is a potential divider and you are taking output across one of the component and therefore, output will always be less than the input and so you get an attenuation factor. But and you also have a frequency dependent component here 1 by omega c that I mentioned to you and that is the reason why you get high frequencies shorted here and you do not come get them at the output. So, the cutoff frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi r c. Now, if I want to make an active filter instead of the passive filter, the active filter I already mentioned to you improves on the general performance of the filter, because you have an active device coming into the circuit, one or two active devices. In our case, we are now discussing about the applications of the operational amplifier. Therefore, using an op amp, you can have an active filter and all that you have to do is just introduce an op amp. You can see on the screen, I have a simple non-inverting amplifier with RF and RI, R1, which is grounded here and therefore, if I give at the non-inverting input any signal V i, you know this belongs to a non-inverting voltage amplifier. 1 plus R of by R 1 is the gain at the mid frequencies. But instead of giving the input as such, what we do here is I use the low pass filter configuration at the input terminal, non-inverting terminal with the R C. So, if I give V input here, this part will act like a passive low pass filter, but the signal is now fed to an amplifier using the op amp, which is a voltage amplifier and therefore, I can get a gain instead of an attenuation. Attenuation is what normally you get as I keep on explain to you, when I use only a passive network of R c, but because I use an op amp here, I can choose the values of R f and R 1, so that I can get a specific gain and therefore, ultimately I can filter as well as obtain certain amount of gain that I would like to have. So, active filters are very useful and you, you the cutoff frequency is again given by 1 by 2 pi r c, there is no change in that. And if you now look at the frequency response, it will be exactly like the what I showed it you earlier, there is a flat response and there is a linear fall either at minus 6 dB per octave or whatever. This is a first order filter, filter because I am using only 1 r and 1 c as the combination for the filter. Apart from that, the active low pass filter is a very, very simple configuration. You can go for a second order filter configuration etcetera, but I am not going to do that. I will per perhaps show you an actual low pass filter working little later. Before I do that, I want to pass on to the high pass filter, because it is very closely related to the low pass filter. In the sense, in the high pass filter, what is the frequency response that you would get? You can see from the figure that the pass band is at the low frequencies. There is nothing is passed when the frequency is low, but beyond the cutoff frequency, all the frequencies are passed. So, you have actually it is written here wrongly. The, this is a pass band, this is the stop band. So, you have a stop band and then you have a pass band. So, a high pass filter stops all the frequencies up to a critical frequency, low frequencies and beyond that all the higher frequencies will be passed. That is a high pass filter and the simplest realization using passive R c components is nothing but the same 
circuit that we gave you uh, discussed a few minutes ago except that you swap the R and C. That is you change the position of the R and C that used for the low pass filter. You put the first capacitor and then put the resistor in shunt. Now you know what is going to happen because the capacitor is coming at the input it is blocking all the low frequencies. It offers low resistance for high frequencies. So all the low frequencies will be not allowed to go beyond and all high frequencies will pass through them and then you will go get it them get them at the output. So a high pass filter passive high pass filter can be easily constructed with the same RC circuit by putting C first and R as a shunt between the input and the output and the cutoff frequency is exactly the same f is equal to 1 by 2 pi RC where f is in hertz, R is in resistance in ohms and C is in farads and uh, the actual passive filter is shown in the picture now. You can see there is a capacitor and then the resistor. So, all the low frequencies will be cut off here and when the frequency becomes beyond certain range the capacitor will offer less and less resistance as the frequency increases and therefore more and more voltage will come at the output. If you look at the frequency response you can see there is almost no signal coming from the amplifier at the initial stages for low frequency and then it starts slowly building up and beyond certain frequency you find you almost get a flat response right. So, this is what you will get as the response of a high pass filter and we can easily construct an high pass filter also exactly similar to the low pass filter that we talked by using an operational amplifier then it becomes an active high pass filter. So, in the active high pass filter you could immediately recognize I am sure that it is exactly the same circuit except that R and C have been switched. We had R here for low pass and C here now we have C here and R here they have changed the place and thereby it becomes an high pass active filter rather than a low pass filter. As I mentioned earlier by choosing the proper R1 and RF you can get set also a very specific gain that you want to achieve. So, you have a high pass filter and a low pass filter first order filter basically these are Butterworth filters designed by, by uh, implemented using an active device namely the operational amplifier. Now, you before I go to show you the actual configurations in the on the lab table I would like to indicate one important prop point here and that is you know the operational amplifier itself has got a finite bandwidth. We have already discussed that the the unity gain bandwidth of a normal 741 operational amplifier is 1 megahertz for 10 power 6 you all know that 10 power 6. Therefore, you would find if I go to higher gain it will still be less the gain bandwidth product is a constant we know. So, if I come to lower and uh, higher and higher gains I will get lower bandwidth and therefore, the even though it is a high pass filter it means that it will block all low frequencies and pass all high frequencies that is not true all high frequencies limited by the frequency response of the operational amplifier. Therefore, after beyond certain megahertz 1 megahertz or so you would find it will start falling again even though it is a high pass filter that fall is now due to the active device that I have used namely the operational amplifier. Appli operational amplifier has got its own limited bandwidth and therefore, the upper end of the frequency response will be limited in the case of the high pass filter by the active device that I use in this case the operational amplifier. So, you should remember these two important points and with this let us try to move on to show you the two configurations the active low pass filter using operational amplifier and active high pass filter using operational amplifier. So, here you can see for identification I have given the low pass filter circuit diagram also. You can see there is an op amp and you have the R1 is 10 k and RF is 100 k. So, there is a gain of 1 plus RF by RI which is actually here 11 1 plus 100 by 10 and at the non inverting input you have the low pass filter passive low pass filter introduced with R 10 k and C 0.1 microfarad. So, I give the input signal here 
and this same configuration is what you see on the breadboard here. You see the op amp, you see the uh, R, the 10 k resistor at the input and you have the 10 k resistor grounded and the capacitor 0.1 microfarad and the feedback resistor 100 k all wired as given in the figure. Now, the input is given from a function generator which you have already seen in earlier demonstrations and you have a whole range of buttons for choosing the different range of frequencies and this is for continuously varying the frequencies and you have the amplitude control and things like that. Because it is a function generator you also have square sign other functions, but we have chosen the sign function here and we have chosen some amplitude output here. And this comes at the breadboard as the input here this terminal and then the same terminal the input also is monitored using an oscilloscope along with the output from the pin number 6. So, the top trace in the oscilloscope corresponds to the output and the bottom trace corresponds to the input and they are low frequency now and therefore, you see there is a slight gain in the upper sine wave it is much larger in amplitude compared to the bottom and now I switch to higher frequencies. You only concentrate on the uh, oscilloscope and you, you see only on the oscilloscope. Right. You see now, now I have gone to higher frequencies on the oscilloscopes you can see that maybe I will increase the sweep. Yeah. You can see that if I now go to still higher frequency this is almost the same amplitude remains here you see it has come down again I will go back you will find this is a thing I go to high frequency and still high frequency when I go to still high frequency from 100 to 1 k when I go from 1 k to 10 k you find this has also come down. This is still sine wave because of high frequency it is looking like a band if I now increase the sweep you can see the sine wave you still see the sine wave. So, you, you can see the amplitude is now considerably reduced compared to what I have in the previous ranges lower frequencies. So, when I go to high frequency you find the output decreases almost it is very low now output is almost very low in this case not even seen, but when I go to some lower frequency there is some amplitude when I go to still lower frequency much larger amplitude. Therefore, as I go to high frequencies the output keeps decreasing that is what we have to look at. Now, one has to actually measure the various amplitudes and then find out what is the gain factor from these two and then plot a graph between logarithmic frequency and the gain or the attenuation as the case may be and you would find the response will be exactly same as what we saw previously. So, this is a example of a active low pass filter. Here I want to see you see the second circuit which is an high pass filter active high pass filter the circuit is shown here again is the same as the previous one with the 10 k and 100 k in the feedback and the input this is a non emitting amplifier and you have at the non emitting input you have a C and R completely interchanged this is 0.1 microfarad and 10 k previous also we used same two, but the 10 k was here 0.1 was here, but now we have interchanged and therefore, it becomes a active high pass filter. So, if I give any frequency here input from the function generator which I showed you earlier you would find for low frequencies no output will come and as I increase the frequency the output will become better and better you will have higher um, amplitudes. So, now I want you to observe the uh, function generator in the function generator I am now in the 100 range I am now in the 100 frequency range. So, I am applying up to 10 and 100 the output is still low if you now observe the oscilloscope you just see the oscilloscope now you see the oscilloscope the output is this is the output this is the input input is reasonable amplitude is there, but the output very low amplitude. Now, I increase the frequency I go to 1 k now you immediately you can see the amplitude has increased right if I go in in small steps let me try to go in small steps by moving the amplitude. then move to other range I move to now 1 k still the amplitude is less now I increase see now what is happening here in the oscilloscope you can see as I increase the frequency you find the amplitude is increasing 
now it is much bigger and still further if I go it will almost become equal to the input now even though the multiplication factor here can be different for the two right. But you can see as I increase the frequency the gain is increasing the gain here is increasing. Now I go to still higher I will just change the uh, multiplication factor so that you can see the sine wave. Now I go to still higher frequency which is 10k range and you can see the amplitude has still further increased. So I have to use the this attenuation. So now it is in the uh, 2 volts range 2 volts per division range previously it was at 1 volts per division. So it is, now it is this much amplitude where large amplitude is seen for the input it is around uh, 0 0.3 300 millivolts range. Now if I still go further you find it decreases. So up to this the input is okay if I go to still higher frequency namely 100 kilohertz you find the output is decreasing why is it decreasing this is what I mentioned to you that this is because of the op amp characteristics not due to the filter characteristics up to this up to about 30 40 kilohertz you see here if I increase up to about 30 40 kilohertz you will find it is almost staying same but if I start increasing beyond that you would find the output start decreasing and that is because of the amplifier characteristics right. Now you see here I keep increasing in 100 kilohertz now you started decreasing already if I still go still smaller it is still smaller. So you can see as I go to high frequency it starts falling and this is this fall is due to the actual characteristics of the op amp. What is very important that for you to recognize is at very low frequencies I did not get any output but when I come to around 10 kilohertz or more you found the output amplitude was reasonably large and with all the gain factor that is coming in and therefore there is amplify the uh, higher frequencies are passed but very high frequencies beyond 100 kilohertz it was not passing it again coming down that is because of the op amp characteristics. So having seen two operational amplifier circuits demonstrated active filters demonstrated one was active low pass filter and the other was active high pass filter. So now let us move on to the next filter which is band pass filter what do you mean by band pass filter I already mentioned to you it will pass a band of frequencies and beyond that on either side it will not pass it will attenuate. So there is no output for certain range of frequencies then there is an output and beyond that again there is no output. So that is what we call band pass filter. Now it is very interesting to see how we can design a band pass filter using a low pass filter and a high pass filter. Can anyone suggest how we can do that? Before we do that you can look at the frequency response what will be the frequency response the brick wall ideal frequency response of a band pass filter. You can see that you have on the screen you can see for very low frequencies there is no output between some frequency f1 to f2 there is a pass band you get a output and beyond f2 again you do not get any output. So this is an ideal characteristic of a band pass filter. In an actual situation what you can do I can introduce a low pass filter and a high pass filter in series making sure that low pass filter the frequency response by like this will be like this for high pass filter it will be like this that is I want to overlap them. So that if I have f1 here and f2 here that two corresponding cutoff frequencies I properly choose so that I get a band of frequencies between f1 and f2 which will alone be allowed all the rest will not be allowed. So the simplest indication is that for obtaining band pass filter you can make use of a low pass filter and a high pass filter in series but carefully choosing such that the low pass cutoff is larger much larger than the high pass cutoff. So what is going to happen is the high pass cutoff will be the lower cutoff frequency lower band of frequency from which it will be allowed and the low pass filter will have a cutoff frequency that will be the upper bound for the band pass. So the low pass frequency cutoff will be the upper bound the high pass cutoff frequency will be the lower bound and between this lower bound and upper bound all frequencies will be allowed all the rest will not be allowed when I put these two 
operation uh, the uh, circuits in series right so the actual band pass circuit band pass filter circuit using op amps is what you see on the screen now you can see it is nothing this first part can you identify what is the first part the first part is a high pass filter because the capacitor is here and the resistor is here and the second circuit is a low pass filter the resistor and the capacitor you can put them any way you want this can come as the first one the low pass can be the first high pass can be the second or vice versa but what is more important is the high pass frequency cutoff should be lower than the low pass cutoff frequency because the high pass cutoff frequency to the low pass frequency cutoff will be the band of frequencies that will be passed by the band pass filter. So, it is a very simple configuration you can make more elegant more efficient filters by going with other configurations, but I want to just give you this idea, but in simple schemes you can combine them together what you have already constructed by properly choosing the RC and then obtain a band pass filter. Now, if I want a band stop filter what will I do? For band stop filter the frequency response will be something like this you will pass all frequencies up to some F1 and between F1 and F2 you will not pass any frequencies and beyond F2 you will pass all frequencies. So, it is stopping a band of frequencies between two limits F1 and F2 that is band pass filter and this is also called band elimination filter. You can easily construct them by a more complicated circuit here I have shown a configuration which is corresponding to a twin T network you see R1, R2 R and C1 forms one T configuration and C2, C3 and R3 shows another T configuration when I combine them it becomes a twin T configuration. The twin T configuration already when we discussed about oscillators we saw it has got a very sharp frequency response. So, it can be used along with op amp to make a band pass or a band stop configuration I am not going to uh, into the details, but what I would perhaps do is I will show you that you have to have these two uh, graphs separated some by some distance and therefore, you get a band stop configuration. The band stop configuration if you imagine I do not know whether you can imagine on your own and come out with a solution using only low pass and high pass can I construct a band stop the answer is yes what you have to do is you should uh, have them in parallel. So, what I am now going to do is I have given this full circuit on the screen I have a high pass filter here and I have a low pass filter the input is coming common to both that means they are connected in parallel and then the output I connect through a another op amp which is in the summing amplifier mode and then I take the output here. So, whatever that comes out here and whatever that comes out will be taken up this will pass all low frequencies this will pass all high frequencies and therefore, I will have only certain frequencies which is stopped and therefore, I should choose the cutoff frequency of low pass and the cutoff frequency of a high pass distinctly different compared to the previous case. That means, cutoff frequency of low pass will be lower cutoff frequency high pass will be higher and between these two frequencies nothing will be allowed on during the rest of the time all the other frequencies will be allowed that corresponds to the band stop frequency. Now, I will show you only one of these which is the band pass filter as the demonstration and you can I will leave it as an exercise for you you can build this parallel combination along with the summing amplifier to achieve simply a band stop filter configuration. So, you have the circuit here which is actually active band pass filter this is built out of the two RC low pass and high pass filter that we have built earlier. So, you can see there are two op amps one op amp is the high pass filter with the capacitor resistor and the other one is the low pass filter which has resistor and the capacitor. Now, if you look at the values of the capacitor the here it is shown equal, but it is not equal we have to choose that properly 10 k and 1 microfarad and things like that. Now, when you choose them properly for the corresponding pass band you will be able to have a corresponding output. Now, I want you to look at the output uh, oscilloscope the at the low frequencies yeah at the low frequencies you find that there is not much gain in the output you get a gain in the low you will get an input there amplitude is this much, but if you find so you do get a good amplitude in the input, but the output almost 
is without any gain. Now I go to slightly higher frequencies then you can see the output is coming now, some amplitude is available whereas the input remains constant because I am not changing that. Now I go to still higher frequency, still higher frequency they are almost equal without any changing any of the gain factor they are almost equal. Now I still go to higher frequency. Now the moment I still go to the next range you find the output is reduced again the input is same in, same almost. So the input is there but the output is changed. So you can see the sine wave uh, and if I still go to higher frequency it will almost die down therefore it is passing only the range of frequencies here in this range that is around 1 kilo. So I am in the now 1 kilohertz corresponding to the function generator in this range the frequencies are completely passed but beyond 1k 10k or 100k or if I go to 100 or 10 you find the output decreases therefore it is passing frequencies in and around 1 kilohertz and that is a corresponding to the pass band range of the frequencies for the filter. So all that we have done here is I have connected the two circuits in series. If I now connect them in parallel and take the output through combine the output together through a summing amplifier so that whatever frequency that comes either through this or through this will also come to the output and then you would find I can choose the cutoff frequency of these two completely different the low pass frequency will cut off at say let us say 500 hertz the high pass frequency will have cut off about 1500 hertz then you would find 0 to 500 hertz will be passed by the low pass 1500 to higher frequencies will be passed by the high pass if I combine them together through a summing amplifier I will get 0 to 500 and 1500 and above I will not get anything between 500 to 1500 that corresponds to band stop and therefore I can connect them in parallel with the summing amplifier I can show the demonstration but perhaps I would leave it for you as an exercise to try on your own and make a band pass uh, band stop filter making use of low pass and high pass filters. Thus we saw in this lecture three demonstrations corresponding to an active low pass filter, active high pass filter and a active band pass filter. I leave this a band stop filter as an exercise where you can connect them in parallel with the summing amplifier. Thank you.